At the end of your life, what will be your legacy? What will you leave behind for future generations? For the world, join the world messenger, Isabella Lundberg, each week as she brings you a new distinguished guest from the business, sports, or entertainment world to share their success, their struggles, and their lessons. They will share their insights into current hot topics that affect everyone. Isabella facilitates an intimate, vulnerable environment to find the true value of humanity and real leadership. Are you ready for your legacy? The legacy that matters? Hello, hello, my beautiful friends. This is Isabella McCure, the World Messenger, and I have absolutely the most special guest uh, for all of you on today's Legacy Leader Show. This is very close to my heart. As many of you know that I came to United States as a refugee from former Yugoslavia. And after living and enduring so many things, I have been established for the United States. And I ran into my fellow Croatian, and we're both diehard Croatians, and we cannot wait to actually depict and share what my guest today, Mr. Marinko Radakovic, or Marko, in unknown in United States, is all about. Marko is a great actor, model, uh, humanitarian, former athlete, and as you guys know, I absolutely love sports and business and life lessons, and we're definitely going to have quite a bit of entertainment lessons in this show as well. Marco, welcome. Well, Isabella, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. And uh, hopefully we can make your whole audience and people, uh, every question that they have in this world, that we'll try to answer, try to give them the best we can. And Absolutely. It's been such a pleasure to know you as a person. And I, I congratulate you on all success and on all your book that I am dying to read it. And please, please, I want that book. I really wanted that book. So, <laughs> You're going to got it. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But it's so great to see also amazing time and how things have happened in a perfect timing, right? We're just started 2021. We just witnessed what happened in our homeland with, uh, with earthquake, with uh, COVID, with economy. And for both of us being diehard Croatians, our heart bleeds, not just for Croatia, but neighboring uh, countries, parts of the former Yugoslavia with everything that is going on, right? Yes, uh, it, it's been like a last, I think they're starting it from March, this all natural catastrophic from the uh, hitting the downtown Croatia city Zaga, which is has a history from the fourth century and, and uh, the old city. I mean, the buildings there, it, it just like, over a thousand years old and they devastate the broken churches. Uh, I mean, this is something that's just astonishing uh, 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 of the damaging and devastate to the all Croats. It doesn't matter you've been outside of the country for so long or been inside, your heart and your soul is still there. Yes, it bleeds and hurts. And then also it's very hard to imagine. And as you said, we come from very amazing history and amazing heritage. And yes, we're proud. We invented the tie, the men wear. We have so much that we pride ourselves and we'll throw some of those great facts in our conversation, guys. So if you really want to have amazing epic journey around the creation, dispel some things, this is where you really will find it. So, uh, but Mark, more than anything, I'm super jazzed uh, that right Running to accomplished, successful Croatian who is in Boston. Oh, come on, it's nothing city. like you. <laughs> <laughs> who is one of my favorite city? You did not pick up a Bostonian accent, which is no. really good. <laughs> no, I did not yet. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe next twenty years. <laughs> but, but for many people, it's like Bostonian accent can be a little bit different. Uh, for people that are traveled to Boston or lived in the United States, and because country is so huge, everybody in a way have an accent, don't they? They do, they do, yeah, they, definitely they do. And the Boston, Bostonians, they have very, very uh, distinguished accent. Park my car and, and that kind of stuff. So it, 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 it's a very uh, entertaining, it's a very, uh, I, I, I find it such a hilarious, it's such a, a something remind me as a young kid that I left uh, Croatia a long time. We used to have a slang in the area where I used to live. So it's kind of like a, that type, it, it's very touch, touching basically. Yes, yeah, nice. playing its own way. Totally right. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> but before we go into epic things and so much of accomplishments and highlight some of the things you are also currently working on, let's take a little ride and take people back to our homeland. 
obviously you grew up in Croatia, heart of the Croatia, the capital and area called Dubrava, uh, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes, it's a little suburban of the capital city Zagreb. And 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 that area is known for a lot of things. I remember Prljevo uh, Kazalish said the, the the group, the great beautiful ballets, and and then just a, the really cool guys who will wear the all stars high tops and great jeans and cool jackets and walk around <laughs> and look like a movie stars, like a James Dean version, have a cigar. And, and in a way were the most charming, but there were also like this like womanizers and I, I don't know, but <laughs> more than anything, they were awesome in sports. Like for everybody that still don't know, Croatia is for per capita, but such a small country has the highest percentage of professional athletes in the world, which again, I have to highlight everything amazing about my country and this is an <laughs> opportunity to do that. Thank you, Marco, for giving me a chance uh, to share that. But you, beside being um, the, this cool guy, you were also early on distinguished athlete. So do you mind sharing a little bit about your upbringing and your early uh, professional ath athletes uh, endeavors? Oh God, I can't tell how old I am, but I'll, I'll try. It's okay, I'll you try don't have to go in age, I'll but. I try to explain <laughs> it in a way that everybody knows. Uh, well, it's been starting young age. I started when I was nine years old and I started playing amateur. And like I said, it was a part that used to be called former Yugoslavia, which which we all live in a kind of dream and land that we didn't know where we are, who we are. We all tried to find ourselves. And like I said, we, we all, all have a dream and I have a dream people play to be professional athletes and that dream come true for me and uh, it's been a lot of work as a young age you know, spending a lot of nights on a on a frozen uh, grass and there was sometimes you know even grass that was just a uh, bald field the grass was gone after so many games play but uh, it, it gave me opportunity basically to raise my soccer adventure and uh, my awareness and you know, coming to the highlight of the few good great coaches that I used to uh, be coach, uh, uh, like Draguti Babets, who is a famous uh, Yugoslavian at that point in time, but today creation player. Uh, Ilya Lucharovic, one of the famous international coach, who gave me opportunity as a 14 years old play for national uh, we call uh, the team that at that point in time as a junior to to advance to the part of techniques and learn and, and, and grow up and build up and uh, grow up. So that give me a lot of other uh, strings and uh, a lot of other uh, energy to build up who I am today. So. That is so powerful. I love those early beginnings because on the contrast, you know, I always wanted to be Olympian and I wanted to be athlete. And as you <laughs> reference to my book, uh, you know, I, the book cover has Olympic torch for, because I watched Olympics in Sarajevo, specific Winter Olympics. And to me was like all this beauty of different cultures, languages, flags, cuisine. And to me was a big, huge awakening too, because I realized how very little was involved, uh, invested at the time in professional athletes because it was not much money and predominantly only in men, very little of virtually non-existent budgets for women. So you were lucky, I guess. <laughs> well, I, 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 like I said, I did the best I could at that time. And, and, and I guess I've been in the right place at the right time. And, 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 and like I said, I, I, I really tried to kind of uh, invent it myself and try to build up my, my future, my, what I want to do when I grow up, what I want to be how I want to represent myself and my country, my parents, my family, who I am and what I'm about. And that kind of like give me that wings to, to fly, get a further down to the road and apart. But like I said, there was a, uh, as you mentioned earlier, there was a great deal as you come in refugees, I come in as a player and, and, and work here so hard to, to build up who we are today. And I'm grateful for this country. And I always say that people ask me, so what is the best country in the world? I said, the best one is the United, United States of America. And the people says, what do you mean? Why? Tell me why. I said, they give you opportunity to be who you are. 
Ah, you are not judged by the people you buy your work and your ethic. But if you want to be bumped, you can be bumped anywhere. So it really doesn't matter wherever you are in the world. So it's all coming from you. You'll be on yourself. That is fantastic. And and you're spot on when when you early start and 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 I, in a way we have a very different strong mentality of people that are capable of enduring so much and war and everything that happened post war proved that over and over. But you on top of that had amazing endurance as a professional athlete and I'm sure you pivot a lot of that strength inner strength right to propel you forward. So a couple of things happen for you and I just want to kind of guys put in perspective similar to me again. Um, my brother was in law school and you were in the law school and you were also athlete and then war happened and everything went, uh, everything was gone in a second, right? Your identity, your position, and, and all of a sudden you had to figure it out where you're going, who you are, what you're going to do and how you're going to survive. So do you mind sharing a little bit of some of those pain pivotal moments that crashed and burned, but in the same time, help you to rise from ashes and move forward? Right. Well, as you mentioned earlier, it's been very significant. You, you, you watching terror every day. I mean, like I grew up in the area of Dubrava, which is middle class of the, of the families. And there was a lot of poverty as well, as, a, as a much as a wellness. But there was a huge distinguish in that part. And really, when the whole war coming, the civil war, the Europas, the airplanes flying overhead of a city, uh, the sirens, uh, going down the nuclear uh, facilities, basically the battle bunkers, locked up, sleeping all night on a bunker bed, uh, watching what's going to happen, who's going to die, who's going to live, who you're going to see, who you're not going to see. It, it, it's open your mind and your heart. Why is that happen to me? You always ask, why, why would... What I did wrong to these people that they are going through this uh, th this drama. Why I could not have a, that piece of child of food? I could eat milk chocolate <laughs> and have a glass of milk and play the soccer without any fear. But there's a moment that you could even hear the bird. You could even hear the dog barking. You only hear mm -hmm. the sirens and they're going. You know now. Oh, okay. This airplanes. Oh, so this is uh, mortar attack. Okay. Oh, so this is a this is a, this is a rocket attack. So everything is is, is becoming you know just infatuated. It just become a, like a science fiction. It just become like a what is Armageddon? Is Armageddon the end of the world? Where we are? What are we doing? There's no people talk about here bank. There's no bank. There's nothing working. There's no picking up the money. There's no money anywhere. It, it, it really, you rely on yourself basically and. Uh, you gotta learn your skills. This is no skills that you learn at university. Nobody asks for that. Nobody yeah. asks when you're gonna pick up the water, when you're gonna pick up the tower. How are you gonna brush your teeth? I mean, when you're gonna find a toothbrush, it's hard. We people have it, you don't have a lights. You open a little, little petrol, petrol, and you light it up, and all of a sudden you hear air, 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 air signs. You blow up, you shut it off. You, you, you become. Almost like a canine. I always joking. Like I always have my ears. I have a small ears, but I like I'm like a canine. Like I start getting like a flipping like a radars. But it, it's a true. It, it's become a reality, and then reality becomes something. There's a, no even more adventure. It's become uh, fear, uh, scary, uh, a trauma. Uh, what is next? What is your future? How you get, how are you gonna live? We you wanna be all your, all your dreams going to river, they're all floating away. There's nothing to catch. Mm. You gotta build up, you gotta invent it yourself. I don't know, I never put the wood down. Let me start building something, let me start creating something. So every these aspects the life teach you something. So that's how they started. And I, I'm be fortunate living in that kind of area that I have a lot of these friends that still today with some of them talking that I can share their stories that we can remember in such a good time and, and music and, and, and a passion, as you mentioned, I mean, fascinating group. We met them down on one of the area. We, we sit down, they talk, they, they have fun. I mean, you see what a life is. Then all of a sudden, everything is destroyed. It, 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 it's a sad. 
Yes, and, and, and one thing, Marco, we're, thank you for sharing that. I can absolutely echo the same thing and contrast what happened in Sarajevo and outside of Sarajevo where I was at that time as well, and how we quickly uh, I felt always like after in retrospect, how our childhood was stolen from us, how we had to replace the play and, and regular things for things that uh, became all of a sudden survival, the everyday survival, and not just the thinking about ourselves, but thinking about our loved ones, about our family, about our neighbors, and, and also the constant struggle because a lot of the very strong uh, figures that we trusted that were predominant in our communities became part of the problem or dividing and tearing everybody apart. And that level, like, as you said, you know, can I, to be, have to be having the radars on who can you trust, right? Yeah. Who, who can you truly believe on information? But it was insane amount, but people don't get it. Like if, like if I'm hearing people complaining now, we have so many outlets for media. I, and then I keep laughing. I said, you guys don't have no idea for such a small country, way before explosion of social media, we felt that way. We had like so many radios, so many TV stations. You just didn't have no idea who to believe what like what evidence and, and, and angles of the story were just complete chaos. Right. right. That, that, that's exa exactly what you just say. That 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 summarize everything of this. And like I says, we all wanna that the, the childhood that we wanna they have a dream, like we call America Dreamerland. Yes, it, it, it's a dream country, but that that was taken from us. It, it just stolen. It, it was uh took it as a prisoners, as it took it as a as a families, they, they just ripped them from apart. And we don't have a dead because we are so uh, attached to the soul and the heart. The hearts to be open, it's very hard and vulnerable to, to open to anybody because we don't wanna be hurt no more. We don't wanna go through traumas no more. We wanna just have a, that small part of the piece of the opportunity in life that we can build up. Even if it's a one step at a time, as we say, uh, brick by brick palace, uh, bead by bead is a red. But that, that, that's, a, that's a real reality. Very so true. So, so for audience that is again watching and listening, guys, I also wanted to kind of propel this forward. So imagine now that and you are now being in a war for a little bit for about a year and a half, right or so, and, and dealing with so much loss and devastation and, and hard decisions. I remember my brother when, when he escaped and went to Sweden because we only had a one brother and we felt like we want to save him. And, and there was also that moral thing, do you escape? Are you deserting or, or should you serve? Because it was a suicide, suicide mission, was midst of, again, you know, in Sarajevo, outside of Sarajevo, and too much of conflict. And But prior to that, we watched also what was going on in, in, in Croatia. And, and, and we, we were paralyzed. We could not believe the images. It was like almost like in a movie, you think somebody staged that. And, 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 and your heart bleeds, but then everybody keeps ensuring nothing like that will happen here. And that happens, right? And, and for that year, year and a half, I can resonate also being in sieged area when you cannot really go anywhere and you have to just take one day at a time. You okay. never know when the new supplies of food is going to come. You never know when toilet paper will arrive. You, you mean like th certain things just don't mean anymore. It's like, no. you know, but like, like I remember I, I, I got the, the little bit of U.S. Uh, military guys that really liked me and because I volunteer for Red Cross. <laughs> and they gave me first time peanut butter. I was like a little squirrel. I could not stop licking and eating peanut butter. I was like addicted because right. peanut butter was like, I guess, good source of energy, whatever I needed because I was running on a on autopilot. But I can't believe also like certain things that made so much joy for me was just like, at least I'm eating something different. And, and I'm like, I'm having a peanut butter like that was like improvement in my life. And, and then listening to some great music because they were listening to some music and I could listen with them. So anyway, what were some of your pivotal moments where you felt the heart and connection in all of the chaos and disconnect, if you don't mind sharing, please. Sure. Well, you know, the, 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 the whole the part of this, the, the moments has been that I did have a, that kind of opportunity to, to move out of the country and, and, and I find that my peace in somewhere else part of the country, even with the language struggling and the new learning new cultural things and everything else. But I, I, 
it just for me was uh, the the part of the uh, not just uh, some escape. It's just a part something to to build up to show the people around that you really thank you for having me and thank you for giving me that kind of opportunity that I I'm I'm in mean that uh, uh, respectful citizen and, and work my butt off and, and make it something great so I can one day give it back and that always can push me to the to the part going forward so they can put all these negative uh, stuff in what I happened I didn't know what I could not take it emotionally but they helped me to build up my artistic part of my acting skills mm. in my career and uh, the, the bring something to the screen and, and find maybe one type character of the roles that I'm playing now and you know, all these uh, type the casting uh, d- directors like me but he helped me build up who I am today so that is beautiful that is beautiful thank you for sharing that so after all this disruption obviously you arrived to the united states and you start and and if you don't mind i mean a lot of times people i even uh when i interviewed um robert lasardo who is a very successful actor who has over 200 credits whatnot and did dealt with so many interesting stories everybody went through this insane um challenging times to build their pedigree or repertoire or be taken seriously or to have open door. So do you mind sharing how, how was your journey, uh, whatever you feel comfortable? Because a lot of times people think nothing gets hand out here in, the, in this yeah, country. Yeah. I mean, th- that doesn't happen unless you have a very amazing parents or yeah. family members. And, and even then that is occasional. It's not regular, regular yeah. type of upbringing. <laughs> so do you mind sharing a little bit about that perseverance and how you pivot that amazing endurance and skill set to build yourself where you are today? Well, I, I think that everything, like I said, is coming from the young age. I, I used to always hang it up with a much more older crowd, new people, and always try to pick it up. Ah, oh, this is a good, this is a bad. Uh, let me see how I can implement that. And there was always curiosity. For me, always education and sports was a big thing that I always look at as a good, uh, I always call them like a red and yellow card, get it out of the game. But the, it's been cards to get it into the game for me because it was always something that always been never reached the limit. It's not, there's no sky limit. It is always something to improve. It's always something to invent in yourself. It's something always to build up. It's something to break something. Even sometimes if you feel uncomfortable in a shell, you grow up and yes. build up that. So that was the part of the, my process playing professionally here in New Jersey and try to make it a team and, and build up that such a great, but like I said, unfortunately, I always joke when I say the interview, the Calgary radio station, uh, I, I felt like a sports car, you know, you can blow up your tires and you can run to the rim, but you can only run the rim till you don't lose your rim as well. So that is the end of the race. But uh, unfortunately- Not to lose the engine. You always have to have an engine, right? <laughs> Engine is the key. You gotta keep going, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> we can replace the tires, even rims, but no engine. That yeah, easy. That's, that that's easy. Right. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Um, reason I, I'm bringing for for obviously from such a small country and how many creations really succeeded in entertainment industry and in acting space. I mean, uh, we have uh, two other uh, very successful like herself actors that are also very well known and i just want to dive into a little bit of that too um and you had a chance to act along the side and some really amazing people so guys marco has a great imbd page you should guys find him there read his bio read the roles he played in read how reversible reversible he is and and how he can really actually play so many different roles because i know that a lot of actors say you know like i'm often pigeonholed as a bad guy or the guy with the tattoos or guy that is always x y and z and you had a quite a bit of different roles so do you mind first of all tell us what was the first role what was the breaking point in in the film industry after oh, acting wow. <laughs> of course the balkan charm the croatian charm this this amazing uh-huh. smile right <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know how much that helped me to my industry but 
All but, this is but hard work with that maybe maybe contribute to get a, get us over. <laughs> <laughs> But also perseverance, obviously, and 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 we have a kind of that stubbornness when somebody tells you you can. I'm like, let me show you actually how is it done, right? <laughs> well, that, that's always for me. I always, always joke with people, and I always begin the interview and say, "Here's the word thanks for me." I when people says they can't, I say, "Just break to me. I'll do it." He says, "You are crazy. You can lose. I don't care. Just, I'll do it. it don't <laughs> ask a lot of questions. I get it. Get it done. That's what it is. I mean, it's really coming to the point that I always, always says. You know, you can get inspired or not, or you build up yourself, or you invent yourself or not. I mean, it's really, uh, it's a, it's a great part of the attitude to, to, to show the people that there's a." really doesn't matter how small things is, it's how big you can go. And, and the results don't even matter that, is that you benefit or not, it's matter the effort that you put in. There's a great quote of Alexander Great. Uh, it says, uh, uh, I'm not afraid uh, of the leader lead by ship and arm, army of the lions. I'm afraid of the army, the ships, and uh, lead by the lion. Mm. So I think that speaks itself. Yes, it does. What, what, what people does. And, and I think that's the kind of part that made me interact with that role, as you mentioned, with some great creation. For example, uh, Rani Shabenjia and Gora who is on a big. Uh, uh, the scale here in Hollywood. And unfortunately, I did have a, a great uh, uh, opportunity to work with Rade on the, one of the movies called Proud Mary. But like I said, I start working on the beginning, as answer your question, on the beginning when I started, the first role was uh, 2000, I believe, five. It's called Game Plan with the uh, uh, Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson, Rock. The rock, you work yeah. with Rock. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a that was the first role I play. I never forgot that uh, they called me up and they told me, Marco, uh, we have a great role for you. You're gonna play European paparazzi and you're gonna stay on half a balcony. And I'm like, what I'm doing European paparazzi? I'm like, what I, I don't wanna be you. I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. So the guy gave me like a three huge cameras and put me on a balcony. He said, you gotta take a picture. I said, dude, who does take that picture? I said, I gotta hang it up. So I hang it up myself. Somebody grabbed for my legs, so I hang it up and take a picture. Rock, rock, right here, right here. And, and that's how I started. I mean, obviously, it's a, it a funny story. That was the first of my movie, so that, and that's leading to today, so. That is fantastic, and I love that it was a, uh, the role of paparazzi, nice. and that propellant excels to so <laughs> many also very well-known American and, and, and world-known respected actors and actresses. So do you mind sharing some of those highlights? I mean, uh, some, of the uh, some, some of those experiences that really helped you to grow as an actor because it's insanely competitive. Guys that you don't understand, uh, roles and, and, and entertainment industry and Hollywood before crashed, before all of these changes with COVID and economy and studios and whatnot, um, there was just insane amount of not only money, but also competition and demand and expectations and standards. And, and it was really hard to compete for certain roles, right? On every role, on average, I heard when they narrow down, you have at least uh, 25 and then that will down even more narrow of potential high prospects that can really do the role. And then really, I, like, who do you know? Who do you trust? Who do you like? Who do yeah. you really want to support? And who do you want to give a chance, right? Right. And, and, I, and I think it's all it's all coming to the, the part of this fit for, for particularly cast and director, what he's looking on that face, and what he's looking for this part, and what is the role be to because I like I like I said in the beginning, but I start I didn't know nothing about union. What what kind of union? So what a union does? Oh, it's paying better money. Oh wow, okay. So it's a contract. Oh, you have a contract. Oh wow. So you're gonna get to eat better food. Oh, I don't wanna eat junk food. I wanna eat better food. So I, how I get it to that part? So 
there's a lot of this kind of misinformation discovering that you try to hold the process. You try to find yourself who you are in this character. And, and I was very grateful that here in the Boston, there's a big Boston casting agency, Boston Casting, and uh, owner Angel Perry, Lisa LaBelle, who's still a very great my friends and still Lisa running my commercial part here. But it's a, it, it's such a give me that kind of opportunity they discovered in me that kind of European style and element. And I guess the face and that symmetric, oh, you have that kind of symmetric face. Ah, like, okay, oh, you can be one day uh, terrorist, another day Russian, and. Uh, you know, another day Austria, German, or oh, coming down, make a laugh and make a laugh. <laughs> you know, every way that, that make it. And I like, okay, whatever is a challenge, I'll take it. So I never be that kind of guy, oh, I don't want to do this role, I don't want to do that. I always would ask me for do, I always be there, I always looking for something more. So that's how I started. It's amazing when you open, when you have a great mindset like you do, and you're willing to put yourself uncomfortable and try these different roles uh, because there are teaching moments, there are learning moments, there are growing moments, but in the same time, help you to discover and rediscover yourself and really see what you're really good at it. So I love that. I, 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 the best part is like people says the background, yeah, bad, but there's a lot of different things in the background. It's not just a walking dogs and sit down on, a, on the side and you don't know if you're gonna have a screenshot, no screenshot. It's a much more today. You sometimes like I used, I, I still today love going behind the camera of a director sit down and looking at the screen and see what he's looking for. I look at that part of the performance of the artist, especially these big stars, uh, you know, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Cruise, uh, you know, Mel Gibson, uh, uh, Peter, uh, what's called, uh, Lars Mikkelsen, that I worked with him on a house of cards. I mean, Danish, Denver guy, he's just an amazing actor. And his brother, uh, Mikkelsen, he was in a James Bond. He was uh, playing uh, the guy with the blood, you know, the, the yes. eye coming down, the blood. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it is a thing. He, he was playing Albania guy, but th th this is a kind of things that I joke. Like I used to with Larson, we walk into the set and he's exercising Russian work his yet. And I try to tell him, no, 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 Larson. He's saying that very good. There's yet your suka. And the lady right away rushed, no, you crazy, Marco, don't teach far as that. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm like, laughing. So we, it, it is a kind of part of the bond that you find with these people and they give that kind of energy and they lift it up and it brings up your screen. So, so like I said, every of this signal was such important to me to build up myself today who I am. So. That is beautiful. And, and, and again, for everybody that is listening, you have to be vulnerable, you have to put yourself out there, and you have to be willing to take roles and situations that really will be pivotal learning moments. You mentioned House of Cards, you mentioned, um, but do you mind sharing some other, like, I, I mean, I have a list here, but I want an uh, audience to hear from you. <laughs> I mean, you got you have amazing pedigree. You've been in so many great shows and so many great movies. So please share with the audience so that they can really say, oh my God, that is the guy. Okay, now I can connect the dots, please. Here's the thing. So I, I, I love it when I started with a big show, Blacklist, right? The, the, in, yes. In the two was a, such a popular show. There were almost 50 million people watched the show. And I love it. I did have a role of the head, the Russian head security for Morozhov. And Morozhov is a great guy. There was a season two, episode eight, that he was a gentleman actor from Israel who was in a Berlin uh, movie, 1934. I mean, he is a great, great actor. And I, I learned so so much with him. And I, as a, his head security and running that part security team with, with him, it was such a privilege. We went some scene, even stunt scenes that we, they wire up this my security team they're looking like a robots and you see the fake bullets i mean you you, you sit down like a 15 hours and a set the door closed and you hear elevator bing and open and you hear all sudden explosion it's like a flash grenade and all, right away i'm like okay who's shooting Who, where, are we, where are we going and, and then the door open and then you see the smoke the blood and you see the bodies down it's kind of like make you discuss then you then you remember so this is a hollywood this is a screen this is a this that is, is a part of the entertainment yeah. the people what they people do but like i say i learned to the to these guys so much it, it just even 
have a communication how we got at that. Uh, look at him, how he's learning the script. I mean, these are moments that you, you can't just share. You don't see them that often. You don't see what is going behind you. People see only what coming out. They don't know how much important this things. Like a 15 hours a day, be locked up in a dark warehouse and you eat small peanuts <laughs> because no time, because everything is so crucial, critical, you need to get it done, get it, get it be done. So this is a kind of show blacklist. And the second one is also my favorite person of the interest, which I play secret service agent. Mm -hmm. and I mean, that was also something unbelievable. I mean, I, I work with the 35 secret service agent, decorate people that work with the three different presidents from two Bushes and Clinton's administration. I mean, this is a people that be on line of duty every day. And I become the guy who's chasing Jimmy Chavez on the square and looking as a bald who try to assassinate President of the United States. So it, it, it's a fun, it, it's a, it, it's make me happy, make me to do something that, that quality work people do. And then another one is uh, Patriot's Day with Mark Walbert, which is a yeah. local guy in Boston with a Peter Burke, who is an amazing, amazing director. And Eric Weinstein, who is a, his manager. I mean, I, I ever like I, one of the funny, uh, quickly story uh, on a P Patriots Day. I have a birthday that day, and they called me from management. Uh, assistant director says, "Marco, you can come early." I said, "Why are you coming early?" So there's two things: Am I getting fired, or I'm getting hired? I'm getting supporting role. Maybe I get a speaking part. Oh my God! I'm like, I'm getting ready. And I'm coming down, there's nobody there. I'm like, there's no cars. Like, what's going on? And I'm getting dressed in a police uniform. I'm getting to the bar. I'm like, what are we doing here? I don't have idea. And a Peter Burke that I didn't know about him, he was an Olympic boxer, a United States of American Olympic boxer. So he was boxing shadow. And I was laughing. And I'm like, so I come in, coach, he was behind the bar. So he coming behind the bar and look at me and he's very straight. And I'm looking at him, he put the hands like the straight, like in a Rocky. And I say, and I come over hands and I say, I need to break you. And I slap the hands like a, even Drago in a Rocky when he hit the hands. He says, okay, now I want you to tell me second line. What is the second line? He says a Rocky. I'm like, I don't know. And he start like going ballistic on me. I'm like, he's getting mad now. Why is mad? I'm like, I don't know why I was brought up here on the first call. And then all, all of a sudden, people start popping up through the door, like a balloon. Happy birthday, Marco. Uh, I was like really shocked. It was my birthday day. I'm like, wow. And then he brought up the beer, real beer. So the assistant director, Marco, we cannot drink. I'm like, who cares? It's, it's a, your beer. I'll take a sip. And I says, okay, let's go shoot in the scene. So that scene, you can see in a movie, Patrick's Day, celebration of the catching the terrorists. That was a celebration of my birthday, obviously. But it was such a touch to the heart that somebody that caliber as a Peter Burke could take it uh, away, uh, something for me and, and bring up. And like I says, that's the part. And uh, like I says, there's been a few others. Um, I can't even look it up now. But like I says, I'm not much looking at my work, but. Definitely, every single has a very interesting angle and interesting things. Thank you for sharing some of the background stories. But guys, yes, let me quickly recap. Patriots Day was released in 2016. If you didn't watch it with Peter Berg, starring with Mark Wahlberg, it's, so, it's fantastic. Definitely great one to watch specifically right now when we're not traveling and have a more time. Ghostbusters. Uh, with Paul Fing uh, and also with Melissa McCarty. Oh my God, that was hilarious, Matt Walsh. That, that, that's a funny, I mean, I was, was with the Matt Walsh. You with her and that, I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, they, they, Paul Fing, I love him. He's always dressed impeccably. Uh, nice <laughs> suit tie, head chap, was always, I love that style. And he's always been very particular, very macular. And Matt Walsh, and I worked with him so hard. I mean, there's a three, of us in a black suit, we look like a man in a black, uh -huh. <laughs> and two black SUVs that we are Homeland Security agent, and we become first in uniform. They want to put us in uniform with tactical police special uniform, and then TV crew from the Channel Seven saw that TV and Pulse grabbed that and put us in, in suits. <laughs> and there's only three of us, and then me and Matt spend that quality time on the set. 
till I did not get an invitation to Saga Awards. Then I saw him on the Saga Awards the same year in September. I'm walking down red carpet and somebody, Marco, you son of a man. I'm like, who are they? Is? And it's him with a wife, Mrs. Morgan Walsh. They're walking down, come on, give your brother a hug. And then people start around us, surrounding. So there was, a, there was a something that, like I said, these people make millions and millions of dollars in the business. So obviously it's not just about who they are. They give it back to community as well as I want to give back to community. So this is a kind of part to show that we, it's not just about be famous. It's not just about Hollywood. It's not just about making movies. But it's something that you learn from each other as a brothers and sisters. That is really, and of that part and interest to bring and give the community before uh, we go into what, how you do that and what you need to make. I just also want to love Marco uh, because I can. <laughs> um, I loved you in Equalizer because uh, just to, I mean Denzel Washington any whoever stars with Denzel Washington it's like oh my god and you had a chance and he he's total faves of course you and Rajesh and Goran Vishnich. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, I'm a little bit biased here, but you've been also working with some really amazing people. So, um, yes, you guys heard about House of Cards, Prison of the Interests, Elementary, Blacklist. Uh, but anyway, I just really wanted to also point out, you did start with uh, Johnny Depp and Joel Ingleton also. Yeah. So that it was really a black mass. I remember that, that. That was a great scene because I have a last scene on a bar playing bartender. Yeah, and that was hilarious because the John Eagleton says, oh my God, man, he should be, yeah, he, they should give him one good sparky speaking line. And for one reasons or another, I really did not push anything because you don't want to push the director over the chair. You want to let the, everything develop naturally. If people see that, people will give it to you. And But there was joy just working on something. There's a, such a connection to the Boston and the Mafia and the mobsters. I mean, like I said, this is so everything many, that has uh, happened in Boston reflecting in a way, and that's awesome. <laughs> that was Boston. easy. That so was easy for Croatia. Sorry, Boston, we love you. We love you. Yeah, the we love you. Definitely. I love Boston. It's, it's, it's the most of woman's city. I love it. Everything. It's just a, it, it's a, it's a great, it's a great part. We, we joke specifically because, you know, oh, even though we grew up uh, inland, but when we go down an Adriatic Sea, Boston is and oh, so close. We feel like we're almost in Europe, right? With those European transplants in a way when you have Atlantic and when you see and think that on the other side, it's the homeland, it just kind of feels so much, much more closer, doesn't it? Yes, yes, it does. It, 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 it's like, a, it's a bringing that kind of uh, fresh air from the sea. It, it just kind of like a refreshing you. It's almost like a, relaxing and recharge your battery that so you can keep going doing what you love and what your passion is and one thing i really want to just pause for a second guys the why i'm so much bragging about marco he's so freaking down to earth and he's super awesome <laughs> thank you for that but <laughs> you work with so many different cool people and still have amazing sense of humor it's a very common creation thing just <laughs> <laughs> and and has insanely huge heart and and really truly wants to help people and one thing that really touched me for everybody you guys can go and also check on his um instagram and reach out to connect because he shared really powerful stories so do you mind sharing with audience you don't and i love when people are giving not for brag not for status not for social cloud not for any other reasons and and a field move they cannot pass without doing nothing and they really make something for, for a little and 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 i do want to do more and and there's so many great to join forces to make a contribution obviously but in our homeland but do you know you just did uh during the holidays and how you make an impact for someone who would otherwise yeah, it, it's, been, it's been like I was in a sequester working on a new project that I can't disclose at the moment because it's still in a, in a full swing. But uh, I can tell you that it's a pretty big. And, uh, but I have a call from a European, uh, uh, very uh, famous and reliable resources from Croatia and especially from Croatia uh, diaspora people that they, they're living in Croatia in Germany 
they contact me and they would love me to help them uh, raise for one of our small child creation kid who was premature born and uh, named Carlo uh, and his family, they uh, coming from very low income uh, and no possibility to raise the money for the uh, child to have a, a successful surgery and operation and pay for medical bill. Unfortunately, uh, like I said, I've I been mean, helpful with uh, a few people from organization, newspaper in Frankfurt to put this article together and post it on my Instagram, my Twitter as well, and my Facebook uh, fans page. I have my personal fans, uh, Facebook page. Uh, so the people can look it up and read themselves and they can go and decide if they don't want to donate or not. But I also posted a video in the sequester that I asked people and pledge for, for the look at into that. And because every child deserves better life. And if we can do that, that's going to be, uh, there's no price to talk about. It's no price to pay. There's nothing more than that child that can have a, that happiness and see and have a better future and better life. It doesn't matter who done, it doesn't matter what we do, but it matters that effort that we put. And uh, I was very grateful the family reached back to me and they says they reach uh, the amount of money they, they needed. And uh, creation also the, the, the organization who, who supported that with the, the national newspaper of the creation and, and, and uh, organization outside of the country. Uh, they uh, published some list of the people who donated money, and I was very grateful that we could all together work to that and, and help the child's uh, better future. So it, it, it's really pleased me to do so. So whatever I could, I'll do it. That is so powerful. And again, thank you for sharing, because uh, what I love about, again, when we're humble, when we're present, when we're aware, when we also have such a strong foundation as a human, we bring humanity together. And, and more and more, we need these kinds of stories that unite us and put us on forefront to make an impact and difference. And, and definitely, guys, stay tuned, because we're going to be doing some major stuff in 2021. And, and I cannot also disclose or say anything, but just the fact that you're doing some amazing projects with top guns, top pay listers that everybody actually love and would love to have nothing shake their hand and ask some questions. This cool guy has a privilege and opportunity to be in it with them and seeing them on the set and talk to them. And guess what, guys? Again, this is from leadership standpoint that I want to highlight. When you show up, when you show up authentic who you are, when people get to know you, when you're consistent, when you show up also as a good hum uh, human with good sense of humor, and when you don't have nothing to prove aside to always wanting to bring excellence in your work and professionalism and support to, towards the others, doors start opening, your name starts creating buzz. People just gravitate towards you. They want to spend more time around you. They want to spend more time with you. And they want to include you in interesting projects. I mean, I'm shocked that still is some filming happening because so many restrictions. And people also look in geographic regions so that people don't have to travel from LA to New York or Boston or whatever. But in the same time, it's such a saturated pool of talent and to be given to people like Marco and, and, and be competing with, with a lister crowd, guys, that tells you so much you need to really know. Those things are not accidents. Their attitude, their aptitude, and truly, truly, generally personality and who he is. So it, you have it, it, Thank you for that words, Isabella. But I just want to add it up one more thing that you just mentioned the, with the COVID and, and the seriousness of wearing the mask and people don't realize, I mean, I can tell you that what we're working right now in a major production, I can't again share this stuff, but like, I, I wanna tell you everything, huh? but it, it's so exciting. But I can tell you that, that I'm so grateful to production and, and, and the casting directors and everybody else that keep us in line, they keep us safe. And, 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 and people may be upset that we don't have a, this, we don't, you know, here's the things. This is a company that multi billionaires They really don't spare a dime and money for these kind of things because we want people be safe. People want to be working, but we're grateful that we can still uh, bring that food to our family on the table, that we still have a sometime jobs, that we can 
something make a production to that part that the people can see that work and understand how hard it is in these conditions and, and, and especially in this uh, time uh, of the very difficult uh, place uh, yeah. and challenging to uh, produce something like this. And we are grateful. I am grateful for my job. I'm grateful for everything that is, that is brought up to me. But like I said, it, 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 it's a challenge. It's every day it's something new, and, uh, and we all love it. We are, that's, that's the reasons why we're all here. When you love what you do, you're going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. And that is exactly, and I love your mindset. So it's not about complaining. It's not about all about you. It's and being prima donna, but it's all about respecting the policies, the rules, making everybody else safe, not just yourself. Because when you're dealing also with seasoned experienced actors and actresses, uh, the, the risks are higher. And, and with as some people age, they, they, the risk of them getting really sick or even possibly dying. And nobody wants that. And, 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 and I'm so glad to hear that. And I know that is not easy. I know that you, you were mentioning earlier how many COVID tests you have to go in just like in 30 some days, at least double amount of that. So really, I just want to say, despite everything, I'm just impressed that things are happening. And I'm also impressed how well you're adjusting to that, to new norm into new normal kudos right. well like i says it, it's not easy it's take a lot of time a lot of dedication a lot of work on, on another side and, and, and you need to be understanding like i said this is not a business for everybody and, and like i says everybody who come in this business want to be celebrity i i would i would give you good advice uh if you this is what you just want to be then you're in the wrong profession because this is a something that is a much more deeper, much more sophisticated, much more challenging, and much more internally as an artist uh, brought up. up. And, and it's asking much more time and much more dedication than anybody think and anticipate. Wonderful. And if you don't mind, Mark, or just to share in closing for our audience that is again watching and listening, uh, a path forward. I know that we're, we have aspirations, what we want to do and how we collaborate and decide, right? And how we contribute in humanitarian efforts and outside of our professions. And, and then also what we do with our professions to keep current and keep working and keep doing things so that we can keep our mind occupied, right? So we don't think also what is not working and what is missing and all of those negativity. What would you recommend for everybody, specifically for our people in Homeland that will be also watching and listening to this in Croatia but and diaspora, Croatians that are in diaspora uh, amongst obviously everybody else, what would you give them as a great tip for this really challenging times and hardship uh, that 2021 is bringing and for people to still don't lose hope? Well, I, I think that as I always say, I always have a, some crazy metaphoric expression. It's like a, it's like a little train. Uh, you never know where's the train going to leave the station, but you always want to be ready to jump again. And the one thing is you never know where the train destination is. And the one thing is that you should never be afraid to take it the ride and see if you like it. If you don't like it, there's always another station you can get off or get on another train. Uh, it, it, it's a very, uh, it's a very humbling experience to invent it yourself and always to look at know what people can do for you. It's look at what you can make yourself. And I always say, always joking again, metaphorically, I, when the people have a birthday, I always say, I'll send you for the, for the birthday gift, a mirror. I said, Mark, are you crazy? What do you mean mirror for a birthday? I said, every morning they remind you when you wake up, this is what you see. And this is what you're <laughs> gonna have until the end of the day. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, it's a really true. Yeah. And, uh, it, it is a part of what you see, and that picture is going to only depend on you. And, and, and people will enjoy that picture as much as you put into the work. Because I always say, Picasso is not just a picture because what is a painting, it's a frame too. Yeah. So it, 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 it's, it's a part of the all diligent work and uh, anticipation in everything what you do. Mm -hmm. So I think you should never be afraid to take a new challenge, get out of the uncomfortable shell and explore. Be Jacques Cousteau, I always says, who you are, Jacques Cousteau. 
<laughs> yes, I love it. And I love your analogies because guys, that is so relatable, no matter which part of the world we are. And, and I love that with the mirror, because on the end of the day, do you front? Are you happy? Are you, are you self-loving? If you not, what is going on? And, and, and a lot of work and then mirroring that, what do you really want to uh, come up across? How do you really want to be uh, received from the other side, from people that love you, that respect you and, and, and care for you? That is brilliant. Actually, I feel like that is major, major transformational golden nugget guys here for everyone. So I, I, I think this, this is just a, just a part. And I just want to add in that one more thing for the end. Uh, uh, we have it now in the February 19th Netflix is coming. I care a lot with the Rosamund Pike, a great English actor that I work. I play one of the police officers arresting uh, somebody that tried to get into the elderly home and uh, put them in a police cruiser. But it, it, it's a, such a, a great trailer just coming today out so everybody can look it up and I, I post it on my Facebook page as well and on my uh, uh, Facebook fan page. Uh, I did not have a chance yet, but I put a little uh, picture uh, of the poster myself uh, in uniform on Instagram. You can always look it up. Uh, some fun scenes behind the set and all other stuff uh, I, that I can share at the moment. But it, 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 it's, it's just like I says, I'm grateful that I have that kind of opportunity, that job, and then I can invent it. And, uh, and I hopefully, uh, together with you, Isabella, and uh, you're amazing. And like I say, I wanted that book. I want to read that what you wrote. I, I'm, I'm kind of really inspired on that part because I love a good stories and like love good uh, thoughts. Uh, I really would love that we uh, take to that some another level and uh, show the people that the really there's a uh, people who care here. So we still fantastic, and we definitely will. As we get all these years, so we still can count. <laughs> we still can perform. <laughs> Yes, yes. After all this pain and growth and transformation and ups and downs and failures, right, as well successes, it is opportunity also to give it back. And I'm super excited, guys, to share more. Uh, but I will also point, uh, put all these links when we release this podcast so you guys have access to that very easily, readily available and ways you can connect with Marco across the platforms and then stay tuned because this 2021 is already looking insanely awesome. We just started, guys. So buckle up, as I would say, champions, because buckle up. it's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Oh, excellent. Marco, it was an absolute pleasure to have you and thank you so much for sharing. This is to be continued. We'll bring Marco later on in a year because I'm hoping for some major premieres coming up and major releases, right? Yeah, we'll see something at the end of the February, so we'll maybe stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Marco. Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to Legacy Leader Show. If you enjoyed the content and had a positive experience, then please leave us a positive rating. In addition, leave us positive review whenever you are listening on whatever platform that might be. Make sure your friends and family also know about the benefit and value that we provide and what we have to offer. Cheers.